If you are supposed to factor the greatest common factor out of two terms, how do you determine what that GCF is? It is likely that you are so good at it that you couldn't even put into words how you do it. So for example, like the numbers are easy. So in this first term and the second term, the numbers that these have in common, the greatest common factor is going to be a 3. So we could factor and put a 3 out here. There's also a number of x's in each of these. So the question that I ask you, which is the crux of the question you're asking me, how do you determine what exponent's going to go here? Do you choose the 2, or do you choose the 3, or do you choose something different? Well, the answer is you always choose the exponent that's the smallest. That's the least, smallest, least thing they have in common. So in this case, the exponent's going to be a 2. So what's going to be left? It's going to go in the parentheses. So to determine what's left, we're going to divide 3 by 3. goes one time. We're going to divide x squared by x squared. It also goes one time. Plus 12 divided by 3 is 4. And then how do you determine what x cubed divided by x squared is? Well, here is the technical answer. Is you take the original exponent minus the exponent that you took out for the GCF which means this factors into a 3x squared times the sum of 1 and 4x. Let's look at one that's a little more complicated, number 2. There are two terms in this problem, term 1, term 2. A factor is something that you're multiplying. So this is a factor 8 times of the first term. This is a factor seven times of the second, I'm sorry, of also the first term. First factor, second factor. Of my second term, 3x squared plus 4 is a factor nine times, and here 9x squared plus 31 is a factor six times. So what's the GCF? GCF is what's going to go in front, and we're going to put the leftovers inside the brackets. Well, both of these terms have a 3x squared plus 4 in it. So we're going to put one of those on the outside, and I have to determine what exponent goes here. Just like up above, we look at the exponents that we have, the 8 and the 9, whichever one is smaller, we put on the outside, 8 smaller, so that's part of the GCF. And then looking at the second factor, these both have a 9x squared plus 31, So that goes here. To determine the exponent, we compare the exponents that are here. The smaller one goes on the outside, that's a 6. So to determine what goes in, the, in these brackets, the leftovers as I'm calling them. So to be clear, this is the GCF, both of those together. And then this here, this is not a mathematical term by the way. Please don't use it when you go to college. So I took all of these out of the first one. So there's none left. There's a one left here. Here, I took six out of the seven away. So there's one left. So it's going to be a 9x squared plus 31, technically to the first, which we don't need to write, plus this plus sign is coming from here. How many of these did I take out to the front? I took eight of them. So there's one of those left. And then how many of these did I take to the front? I took all six. You could then add these together. So our final answer for this, if we were supposed to factor this, this type of factoring is going to happen a lot in calculus. I know we have not talked about it yet. And you might be thinking, why haven't we talked about it yet? I can't teach everything at once. That's the short answer. So if I add these together, I'm going to get 12x squared. If I add these together, I'm going to get plus 35. And then you could factor a little bit more. You could factor a three. Actually, you couldn't. That's, so that's fully factored. You're probably thinking, this isn't helping the question that I asked. Well, let's look at something that appears to be easier than the problem I just did, but it's not. This is harder. So what is the GCF? And then what's going to be left over? 
So comparing these two terms, obviously a 10 and a 4, you can divide both of those by 2. That's the greatest common factor. And then here, we're going to have an x out in front, but what's the exponent going to be? On well, these other examples, every time we chose the exponent, it was the smaller version of what we were comparing. It's the smaller version of what we're comparing. Smaller version of what we're comparing. So here, what's smaller? Is negative 2 smaller or is 5 smaller? Negative 2 is smaller. So this is the GCF, 2x to the negative 2. So how do you determine what's left? We're going to divide 10 by 2. That goes 5 times. We're going to divide x to the 5th by x to the negative 2. And how do you do that? You take the original exponent minus the exponent you took out to the front. So that's 5 minus a negative 2. That's going to be 7 minus 4. Whoops, sorry. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And here we put this entire thing out in front. So there's nothing left here but a 1. And if that doesn't make sense, if you take the exponent, negative 2 minus a negative 2, that's going to be negative 2 plus 2. So, I mean, that's an intermediate step that you may, maybe you don't need to see. This is going to be 2x to the negative 2 times 5x to the 7th minus 2. If you were to distribute this, 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, x to the negative 2 times x to the 7th is to the 5th, add the exponents, and then x to the negative 2 times 1 is x to the negative 2. So let's go to your question, which is this fellow right here. So looking at this line 2, we've got 2 times x squared plus 7 to the positive one half plus 2x squared times x squared plus 7 to the negative one half. Both of these terms have an x squared plus 7. Both of these terms have a 2. So our GCF for this is definitely going to be a 2. And there's definitely going to be an x squared plus 7. And what's complicated for most students is to try to figure out, well, what's the exponent going to be? Like I mentioned before, the exponent will be the smaller of the two exponents. This is 1 half. This is negative 1 half. So that's going to go out in front, negative 1 half. Then in brackets, what is left? So 2 divided by 2 is 1. Don't need to write it x squared plus 7 to the 1 half divided by x squared plus 7 to the negative 1 half. Well, that's complicated. But it's not complicated if you understand what we're actually doing is the OG exponent minus the one that's out in front. 1 half minus a negative 1 half is 1. Plus, we took this entire 2 out in front. x squared is left. And then what's going to be left here? Well, I took that entire thing out in front. So that means there's nothing left here but a 1, or we don't need to write it because there's nothing left there. And once again, if you don't understand why is there nothing left here, because it's x squared plus 7, the original exponent, minus the exponent I put in front, and the exponent I put in front, that's what I'm saying this is, that's negative 1 half minus negative 1 half, which is positive, which makes that to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1, and that gives us this line right here. If you multiply it out, you know, 2 times this would be a 2 in front. And then if I multiply these together, um, I add the exponents. Negative 1 half plus 1 is a positive 1 half. And then if I multiply this out, I'm going to get this as well. So hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, then I will try harder tomorrow in person.